Is that an Ellen wrench? Yep. Scavenged it out in the waste. I got lucky. I'll say you did. I've been looking for one for ages. Can let you borrow this one once I'm done with it, if you need it. Game of the Year! Welcome to a brand new over-analysis of yet another point-and-click adventure game. Initially, I planned on completing the entire Wadjedi back catalog before I got to this game, but well, plans be damned. So here I am, about to begin the grand over-analysis of Shardlight, a brand spanking new game by Francisco Gonzalez and Ben Chandler. And yeah, Dave Gilbert helped and gave them money and stuff. But nevertheless, this game was essentially a two-man operation. Well, three if you count the musician and well four if you count the guy who did the portraits but nevertheless less than half a dozen people worked on this game not counting the voice actors but anywho this is mr gonzalez's second commercial game and ben chandler's i don't know fourth fifth sixth i mean the man gets a lot of work so let's cut to the chase shard light is a post apocalyptic point and click adventure game featuring dandies and well a guy who looks like moses Hey, there's plenty of interesting stuff to talk about, so let's cut to it, folks. Alright, now that we're here, let's start a new game. War. War never changes. Okay, that doesn't exactly happen. But what does is this. November 9th. The world ended 20 years ago today. Yeah, no pre-rendered cinematic cutscene featuring a lot of explosions, exposition dumps, and guys talking like this about war and honor and how we're all dead. But no, what we get is a rather mellow and understated introduction into the universe of Shardlight. That also leads me to believe that this menu screen that we're seeing here is actually a real world location, at least in the land of Shardlight. So that means somewhere in this universe you can find bits of glass that have new, load, options, and quit written on them. And it also means that this dude who's about to talk is just waiting for someone to tap on the new glass shard. As I look on the horizon today, I see many laborers going to their lottery jobs. They cling to hope that the ticket they earn will win them the vaccine they need to survive. So the world's ended, although it still seems to be around, but I guess the apocalypse happened, or some variety of apocalypse. The game really doesn't specify just how big Doomsday is. Is it planetary, or just nationwide? Or hell, is it just happening in this unnamed city in the Federal Republic of I don't know where this is a stand? But hey, it's more than just Fallout 2-esque landscapes in this world. We got something called Green Lung to worry about. What's Green Lung, you ask? Well, the game never gives us too many details about it, but from what I can gather, it does something to your lungs involving green. And oh yeah, you'll die from it. It's like a terrible plague that swept over the land. And if you're infected with it, your only hope for survival is monthly vaccine shots. And guess what? They're just not handing them out to anyone. So you have to do lottery jobs in order to get it. And who would have thunk that's exactly what our hero's doing right now? <coughs> oh, it stinks down here. Hopefully dealing with the reactor won't take too long. Gosh, Charlotte, why don't you handhold me some more? Just a little brief tutorial pop-up and a vague explanation as to what we're supposed to do? Gosh, it's like you want me to figure out everything for myself. But oh yeah, I should probably mind the roof. I'm starting to see why this was a lottery job. This better be worth it. I know. Avoiding being crushed by a roof is so blasé. You'd have to be a fool to be crushed by rubble around here. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, dude. Hello? Can you hear me? Took you long enough. I thought I was raven food. Now how exactly is a raven gonna get underground? So we're barely five minutes into the game and we already got a fella being crushed by rubble. Think this game's gonna be grim? So what happened to you? Are you blind, kid? I came down here, I was about to get the reactor running, and there was a tremor. All hell breaks loose, and now I'm crawling my way to the Reaper. <laughs> well, what a coincidence. That's the exact same reason why our hero's down here. Huh, I guess she's his replacement. Wow, oh, what a bleak and cynical world we're in. But on the plus side, at least we learn a couple of interesting things from this man who's slowly being crushed to death. One, we learn that we were sent down here by the very same fella, Tiberius, who runs the Ministry of Energy, and who obviously does not care about OSHA regulations. And also, we learn our heroine's name. It's Amy. And guess what? Our poor hero Amy here 
She also has the green lung. I know, it's shocking. Actually, it is kind of shocking. Normally, games like this wouldn't put their hero into such jeopardy so early on. In a lesser adventure game, it may be her daddy or her brother or some kid who has green lung, and she's going on this dangerous lottery thing because she's just such a damn nice person. But now, this is pure selfishness on Amy's part. And also, this dying dude here seems to have taken to Amy. Hang on, you look familiar. Do I know you? I'm a mechanic. I've got a shop just outside town. Maybe you came in. I knew a guy named uh, Cooper Wellard once. I had a shop around there. Are you related? He was my dad. What's it matter to you? You're Cooper's girl. <laughs> now I for one am shocked that none of this was covered in the game's all too brief intro cinematic. I mean, just think how many explosions they could have had as they dumped all this info upon us. But no, Shardlight wants to have a merce of an organic storytelling. <sighs> I guess this game's not gonna hold my hand. Oh well. But at least when this guy hears our daddy's name, Cooper, which I guess isn't a common name around here, he spills the beans about everything. He tells us how to reset the reactor, and he also decides to give us a crossbow. Well, I guess he doesn't need it where he's going. Thanks. I'll see about getting that reactor started. Now, I already know the reset password to fix the reactor, so I'm just gonna go ahead and punch it in here. Ow! The stupid thing shot me! Hmm. I guess Frank is really proud of this puzzle. But anyway, I would argue that Shardlight's most difficult puzzles occur at the very beginning of it. Not that they're too tricky, seeing as there's only three rooms to explore, but there is some stuff you're gonna need to get used to, like the lack of hotspot detection, which means that you can miss important items rather easily, like, say, a piece of paper that all the way up there. Yeah, you better have noticed that, because that's gonna be essential to get out of here. And just like William Tell, you're gonna have to learn that your crossbow is your best friend, and it's gonna solve a lot of your problems, and also cause a few. I ain't gonna lie, it took me a good 20 minutes to figure out that I could shoot the damn lamp down. <sighs> Too used to the modern conveniences of adventure games. But oh well, at least my reward's a bit of a candle, which I can mess around with some paper over this thing here, and oh yeah, that's actually pretty damn impressive for the AGS game engine. That must have been a bitch to program. I can see why they don't want you to skip it. So obviously armed with these numbers, we're gonna reset the reactor and talk to the dying man for one final time. <laughs> There we go. That wasn't too hard. Good job. Now get over here. That was faster than I expected. Maybe there's still time to... Your optimism's cute, but I'm not going anywhere. Listen up, okay? This is how you can help me. Take this letter. It's going to Danton in the Market District. You should be able to find the right place if you ask around. Okay, pretty straightforward. Deliver a letter, leave a man to die. Oh, we're not leaving him to die, are we? Oh. Well, we restarted a reactor and did a mercy killing. Man, we have been very busy. And we haven't even spoken to Tiberius yet. Hello, I'm here to see Tiberius. Very well, proceed. Oh look, these guards look like they're about to fight in Bunker Hill. Yeah, that's one of the interesting visual stylings of this game. All the baddies, all the thugs at least, they look like they're straight out of the American Revolution. Flintlocks and all. Which makes you wonder, what the hell happened during the apocalypse? Did people forget about assault rifles and shotguns and you know, just any progression in weapons development since the 1800s? Just saying, one guy with an M16, a bunch of ammo, some body armor. Yeah, those flintlocks don't stand much of a chance. And you know what, besides the whole plague thing that's wiping out people and the whole bombing that clearly happened to this city, I'm starting to think that this apocalypse is pretty damn tame. Just saying, these guys are carrying flintlock weapons, and that's enough to keep order around here. Yeah, it's not like these are laser rifles stylized to be flintlocks. No, these are 100% legitimate flintlock weapons. I mean, where the hell did they even find enough flintlocks in the 21st century to arm these guys? Just saying, if the Enclave ever paid a visit to these guys, they'd have a field day. But oh well, let's give the game the benefit of the doubt. Maybe modern weapons don't work anymore because the bomb was made of magic and... Yeah, I believe... 
can't get over that whole thing, but I gotta stop talking about it because, well, we're inside a very nice, almost neoclassical looking building. Hmm. It makes you wonder if there's gonna be a really obvious class divide in this game. But anyway, the guards take our newfound crossbow and we ride the fancy elevator to Tiberius. But before we can talk to the dandy, a soothsayer's gotta be all weird and oracle-y. You are the girl who was sent to repair the reactor, are you not? Yes, that's right. I've done the job. Excellent. Minister Tiberius will be most pleased. I have been authorized to give you your payment. One ticket for tomorrow's lottery drawing. But as you would expect, we're not just going to walk away from this situation. Now the soothsayer's going to be like, Ooh, your aura's all weird and stuff. And oh my god, you have a letter for some mysterious dude. You should talk to Tiberius about it. No, I'm not setting you up for a grander adventure or anything. Thanks. That was very informative. Think nothing of it. You gotta wonder if Tiberius just hangs out behind the curtain all day, or if he hears someone's coming up and he's like, Oh, better get behind the curtain. I need to do a dramatic reveal now. Yes? What is it, citizen? Your soothsayer gave me my ticket, but he said I should see you. Ah, lottery worker. Thank you for your service. What was your task? Hmm, well I think his was eating a ham sandwich. But needless to say, our hero recaps the events up till now. And this dandy boy here seems very interested in our letter, and in fact gives us a bit of wisdom. A word of warning, however. I've heard that this Danton runs in rather undesirable social circles. And hanging out with dudes with flintlocks and powdered wigs is desirable, apparently. My god, the world is topsy-turvy and the old saying is apparently true. When the apocalypse comes, the American Revolution reenactors will inherit the earth. But any hoot, Tiberius here is like, hey, deliver the letter. Totally do that for me. And by the way, when you do that, come back and talk to me because, you know, I got some work for you. Again, not setting you up for something more sinister or grander. No, I'm just saying, do your job. And then talk to me. I might have some more of those, you know, lottery tickets laying around. A wink, wink. Well, actually, it's nothing sexual. It's just more like, hmm, pretty sure Danton may be important. So let's go ahead and try to find this person. And yes, this map does remind me a lot of a golden wake. Except the resolution's better. And maybe the art. <laughs> Now here's the thing about Shardlight. It's a linear adventure game, but to get to that linear bottleneck, it requires you to really immerse yourself in this world. You're gonna have to talk to everyone, and I mean it. You have to talk to everyone in this game at length, which fortunately isn't too difficult of a task considering everyone's friends with Amy, which is great for her and great for us because working through these dialogue trees is pretty straightforward. But my point is, it's kind of required that you gotta do this with every character you meet in this game because a lot of the game's puzzles, a lot of the game's hints, a lot of the game's direction is hidden away in these dialogue trees. It's just there. Like people will offhandedly say something that later on becomes very important in order to progress. So without that knowledge, it can be really hard to make any headway in shard light. Whew, I was ranting for a while there. But hey, we just got done talking to a back alley potter. I know, this is a pretty hard, dark apocalypse. And he didn't seem to know anything about the person we're looking for. Or does he? Hey, Amy. What? I suggest you brush up on your calligraphy. Come again? Just some advice, is all. Do you have any less cryptic advice? You'll figure it out. What kind of advice is brush up on your calligraphy? Hmm. hmm, it appears that writer, game designer, producer, director, whatever you want to call him, Francisco Gonzalez, is taunting us here. He knows he made a cryptic puzzle and he's rubbing it in our face. Again, this brings up my point that you need to immerse yourself in the world, because otherwise this hint makes no goddamn sense. But anywho, let's look at this older gentleman over here who appears to be Moses. Nelson is probably one of the smartest people I know and also one of the few I know who was around before the bombs. So this Nelson guy is one of the few people that you know over the age of 20. I feel like we've met a lot of people who are in their 40s so far in this game. Dude who was crushed, Potter in the back alley, Hell Tiberius does not sound like a spring chicken. Hell, the majority of people we met are over the age of 20. You're over the age of 20, lady. Yeah, it's specified later on in the game that our protagonist here was about five when the bombs fell. So again, he was around before the bombs fell. I guess she doesn't know herself or anything, but oh well. 
It is important that we talk to Moses here, I mean Nelson. You see, he is the keeper of knowledge. And also taking a cue out of the Dave Gilbert School of Design, in order to make any headway in this game, you're gonna have to look some stuff up. Like say, oh, calligraphy. I feel I need to brush up on my calligraphy. You don't say. In that case, allow me to give you one of my books on the subject. It will definitely help you. Thanks. If only you knew, lady, if only you knew. As I said earlier on in the video, Shard Light's most difficult puzzles occur at the very beginning of it. And boy, oh boy, are we in for a doozy. Hi, Dunby. Oh, uh, hi, Amy. So this rather contemporary-looking hoodie kid here has some chalk. We want it. Why, you ask? Because he has something, and we can talk about that item. So obviously, it's essential. But it's not going to be as easy as just, say, telling him to draw Tiberius with stink lines and us shooting the bell that rings the guards. No, no, it wouldn't be that easy. Huh, I have no idea how we got that chalk. Now for the fun bit. What the hell do you do with the chalk? Why you draw something on a chalkboard outside of some door? <laughs> As you can obviously see, I'm desperately trying to write the letter M on this chalkboard. You might be wondering, why the hell are you doing that? Why, you see, I was reading this calligraphy book, and I saw that they were teaching me how to do the letter M, and I was like, oh, here's a bit of chalk in the chalkboard. I could use the practice. Yeah, and I also have a sneaking suspicion that this puzzle may gain some infamy later on. Because, boy, <laughs> well, you know what? I don't even know what to say about this puzzle. On the one hand, I could respect it because it's quite the technical feat. But on the other hand, it's kind of frustrating. You see, we have to write the letter M on this board very precisely. Otherwise, the game won't recognize that I'm trying to do what it wants me to do. And truth be told, I have no artistic talent. I mean, just look at me, folks. Do you think the guy who drew this has any talent at all? But yeah, it got pretty frustrating for me pretty quickly. Because I knew what the game wanted me to do, but I just couldn't execute it to the precision required of me. So, um, I just ended up cheating. Hmm, that should be right, but now what? What now indeed? You see, hidden away in this puzzle now is a hint as to how to get the door open. No, 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 all that ordeal, that wasn't to open the door, that was to get the hint to how to open the door. Clever. It's like an onion. Layers upon layers, and yeah, it's very satisfying to solve this puzzle on your own, but it's also kind of frustrating. Again, I feel like this puzzle should have been towards the end of the game. At that point, you already invested, you already built up to something, and you're like, ooh, this is a real doozy. It must be close to the end game. But at the very beginning, whew, it's quite the stumbling block, and kind of kills the immersion because I'm silently cursing to myself. You, come down here. So yeah, we've unlocked the door, we waltz into this mysterious underground location. A guy is yelling at us, people are everywhere. And again, this apocalypse seems surprisingly safe. Well, other than the green lung and all that. But think about it. We just waltzed into some mysterious location behind a locked door. There's a bunch of people here. And they seem to be okay with it. We're not being killed on sight. They're not really threatening us. They're just like, hey, what you doing in my house? Um, we didn't invite you. This must be happening in Canada. Who are you, and what are you doing in here? My name is Amy, and I have a message for Danton. Well, let's go ahead and meet this mysterious Danton and deliver the message. Who are you, and where did you get this? Danton, I presume? Indeed. Now answer my question. Where did you get this letter? So just like we did with Tiberius, we tell Danton everything we've been up to till now. And then we also mention the fact that our daddy was named Cooper, and it's like a magic word around here. What? You're Cooper Wellard's daughter? Come to think of it, I do see a resemblance. I never heard anything about him having a daughter. Did you know? No, I... Hang on, just who are you people anyway? Hmm. Seems he protected you from us. Can't say I blame him. Can't say I blame this lady's dead daddy. After all, this lady's wearing a top hat. The least trustworthy of all the hats. 
So in case you can't figure it out, these people living down here, they're rebels. They're fighting against Tiberius and his government. Kind of interesting now that I think about it, that the dictator of this land is also the minister of energy. I don't know, I guess he likes to micromanage. But any hoot, turns out our daddy was a part of the rebellion, and he never told us about it. So he must have been pretty good at keeping secrets. I wonder if our mother's our real mother. So anyway, the rebels let us go because we're Cooper's kid, so that means we're cool. And on the way back out to the main street, the back alley potter says this. Yeah, interesting lady. You could say that, but her heart's in the right place. So I take it you're involved with those people in there somehow. Maybe, maybe not. I'm just keeping my nose where it belongs. Sorry I couldn't just give you the secret nod, but it's not really in my place. I knew you'd get it on your own. Huh. It almost sounds like the game's apologizing for the puzzle difficulty. But oh well, that's a high watermark for puzzle difficulty in shard light. From here on out, it's gravy. No, not now. Oh, I may have spoken too soon. Well, that does it for part one of my over-analysis of shard light. Part two will be over here whenever that's up, and you know you can like, comment, and subscribe, and do whatever you want to do. I don't judge. Alright, have a good day, guys.